They simply stole the data set. Scrap chat GPT. Yes, make it illegal. You are watching the chat god channel. Well, that would essentially eliminate progress in AI. But tell us, how could we do it right? Well, I think that's really quite simple, actually. Twitter, for example, could be used. All you need is a, is a closed communication system on whose data an AI, a large language model, can be trained. Wait, are you going to explain to Elon Musk how to build a fair version of chat GPT? Yes, of course. All he has to do is impose a copyright on all tweets. This would turn Twitter users into authors, creators, producers of linguistic intelligence. And Twitter would become a publisher, essentially. And then you want to feed the entirety of tweets to a model like ChatGPT. Exactly. My intuition tells me that the most self-obsessed troll would emerge as a consequence of that. Well, this is where it gets tricky, because obviously we don't want this ideal language model, the tweet god. Yes, we can call it the tweet god. But as I was saying, we would not want our language model to, to parrot the bottom of the language hierarchy, you know, the, the most primitive tweets. I see you want to impose a hierarchy on all tweets, rank them and place the most valuable linguistic content at the top of this hierarchy. Yes, we need to prioritize um, the tweet god's linguistic imitation, you know, uh, direct its focus of attention in order to structure its uh, its intelligence. Okay, so how do we go about that? Well, I think Twitter users would have to judge tweets on a, on a series of rational factors. Like for example, if something is objective or highly biased, emotional or sensible, etc. We have to kill the like button for the sake of objective thinking. We have to reduce the value of, you know, the number of retweets, which only reinforces groupthink anyways. And we have to stop the idiocy of placing such a high value on engagement rates. This only motivates insanity and polarization. You mean like, for example, tweets could be based on, I don't know, say eight very wise parameters instead of likes, retweets, and comments, I guess. Yes, and the AI would also judge um, content or linguistic output, as I like to call it. Part of the judgment process would need to be automated and then need to be corrected by, by human judgment. Let me guess, you want the AI to statistically detect unique patterns of language again, don't you? M motivating novelty. Motivating linguistic or poetic, if you will, um, originality. Yes, the same thing that I spoke about on our last podcast when we discussed the poetic algorithm which is of course the, the holy grail of, of AI. You are watching the Chat God channel. Okay, and then what? Would you want to pay people more, higher their score? Yes, well, I think there would need to be an attention score and a feedback score. The attention score would qualify your media diet. If you are paying attention to content which can be considered meaningless junk food, well, obviously your attention score would be very low. This in turn would also mean that your feedback whatever you feed back into the system, both your linguistic output and, you know, any any rating you provide would also be considered of inferior value because, well, you are what you consume and you can produce something of higher value than that which you consume. I think that must be the logic here. All right, I get it. You want to impose some sort of mental caste system based on content consumption and, and, and content production, right? And, and, and then this Distribute attention accordingly. The goal is an attention meritocracy, as it has always been, Walter, but in this case, it is for the AI to know where to place its mimetic focus, or to put it differently, for the developers at Twitter of this AI to know which data set to prioritize in, in the training of the language model, which would be the peak of the attention hierarchy, of course, um, comprised of those with the highest attention and feedback scores. Absolutely, and it would very likely not be Mr. Musk. 
Right. So engineering wise, I see a lot of challenges. Like it sounds like everybody would be judging the quality of other people's tweets and the weight of an individual's judgment would be a function of their attention and feedback score. So what they consume and what they produce. Indeed. And they would be paid according to their place in the hierarchy, a certain percentage of the emerging or emergent AI's profit on the market. You could call it fair AI or meritocratic AI or just AI, but that's the idea anyways. Enable, empower, and really motivate people to participate in the development of AI and not just be data cows which can be milked for free and then oppressed and possibly slaughtered by the product of the output. Uh, okay, so for starters, who is going to define those eight very wise seemingly arbitrary and axiomatic parameters based on which the attention hierarchy will be manifested, which by the way, at the same time that attention hierarchy would be an economic hierarchy. So it's like the elite would just protect themselves. It sounds like, well, I think Twitter ought to be governed by a board of nine philosopher kings, nine philosopher kings. I don't even know a single one, David. Yes. Well, which is why I think it is self evident what our job is, Walter, we have to train philosopher kings, we are going to be the mentors of future philosopher kings ruling the attention pyramid, in this case, Twitter. Yes, Walter. This is our fate. Sounds like one hell of a fate. Indeed. Well, where are we going to find the human raw material for that? You're watching the Chat God channel. You're watching the Chat God channel.